karate chop right there on the neck. This is important. Uh, it's not too much like this. This is weak, I have no power. It's not my finger, my pinky finger like this. This doesn't bother him, he can just eat it. So it's like, it's perfectly like right into his carotid, into his neck. Squeeze his arm so he can't pull his arm out. Should be really tight. And then now I'm closing my elbows in and I'm straightening him up like this. Foot on the mat, bridge, and hip escape. Foot on the, in the hip. And then my left foot is coming in, toes on the, on the underside of his belly, with my thigh on the outside of my elbow. And I squeeze and get the submission right there, okay? If he has two choices to move his arm, he can either change his hand that way, which if he does that, you can swing over for the omoplata, which is outstanding. That's fine. It's all goodness when we get to the omoplata. Although it may not lead to a submission, usually a sweep. I prefer to submit with the omoplata, but it's, it, it's challenging for most people. Sometimes when you slide out and you try to go in here, he'll turn his hand and grab your shoulder. Yeah, like this. And I'll try to pull his elbow in. See how he does that? That's when we immediately go from this to a pawn to pawn grip. And then I'm going to rotate underneath his body without tearing my opponent's shoulder. So what, I'm going to take it out just for a second. Stay there. And you're going to move all the way under his body like this, attempting to get like this. And then, and then that's going to be killing him with pressure. So my lock is here, and then I'm gonna slowly tap right there, okay? Breaking posture, overhook, close guard. You get to this position, but you find that you don't know what to do. You know, usually you're kind of loose here. The guy starts ripping the arm out, and he starts freeing it, just limp arm it out. Yeah, right there, boom, and then you lose it. Or the other hand comes in on the inside of your biceps. We're gonna get to that problem in a little bit, but you know, if you just hold and you do nothing, he's gonna escape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tighten that up. See, just kind of push it in deep and bring my hand up. So I'm, I'm making it snug. Try to pull that arm out just to see what that feels like. You see how my leg is behind my elbow? So everything is tight. My guard's not down here. My guard is up. Okay, he's trying to move. And then now I just roll my hand, cut right here in front grip so that make a good grip and then i'm squeezing and pushing hip escape now sometimes when i just hip escape like this it can be done just the way i did i use a good force and i just slide the hip but if you want technique let's say the guy's kind of driving in or putting pressure yeah not necessarily sprawl but just bring your knees up kind of smashed yeah like this. i mean like i can't i can't hip out right that's when you have to bridge so i go up out and then I'm right there, okay? And the thigh is on the outside. This foot is like a butterfly hook, except underneath his rib cage, okay? So this allows you to apply leverage. Much more leverage than this. If you stomp on his hip, he can fight this. He can raise his head and drive into me and like fight it. You see that? So it's fighting me. So I wanna hip out. Now when I go into here, try to fight that. And then you feel that pressure. Yeah, now he's, he's caught in the middle and I get the submission, or if you go, go ahead and grab that shoulder, then we go mirror lock, okay? I bring, see how, look, look what I just did. His elbow was here, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't feel like I could fight the mirror lock, because like, he's too strong. So what did I do? I moved my hip a little, brought his elbow to the bit, middle of my solar plexus, and then now I'm moving back underneath. Okay. Yeah, right there, okay? And then what's the other alternative? He turns the arm like a limp arm, and then you go into the homoplata. I do want to say, overhook, do not leave your overhook in. So when he goes like this, do not leave it in. He'll just, your arm's stuck now. He even squeeze your arm so my arm can't get out, Vince. See that, now my hand can't get out. And now all you have to do is a little walk over my head or a cartwheel over my head. Yeah, beautiful. And then he's gonna, I still can't get my hand out. So now I'm like trying to get out of this and he's gonna put me in a cradle, knee me in the face or whatever. So, and then because I said knee in the face, let me just say to the people that are self-defense experts out there, they're gonna say, can't the guy just punch you in the face with his left arm? Yes, he can. And guess what? In a fight, you're probably gonna get hit. But when you wanna hit a technique and the guy's trying to throw the punches, you know, start throwing the left hand, 
you know, I'm kind of like blocking here and holding. And then when I do the tech, where's the hip? Where's that strike? Yeah, where is it? Okay, see my hips? Yeah, that strike's not there right now. And now as I'm trying to force the submission, tap or he turns and rolls into omoplata. Okay, we're here and now we can do it. Okay, so there's always gonna be those discussions. And the, the hard part about teaching jujitsu is that we teach it without strikes and then everybody always goes, that's not real, bro. In a real fight, they hit you. And that's true, but you can't learn if you're always getting hit in the face all the time. You're not gonna pay attention to the technique. Most people, they get hit in the face when they start learning martial arts, they're just gonna cover up. So you would never learn the technique. So that's why we take out the strikes. Everything's harder when it's real. Try swimming. You're trying to learn how to swim, but we also have crocodiles and sharks in the water. That's not gonna make it easier to learn how to swim. But I'll tell you what, if you were with crocodiles and sharks, you probably would wish that you had a lot of training in a, in a pool for a long, long time if you're, gonna, if you're gonna survive this encounter, okay? So let's go practice. Uh, I don't have a name for this. Again, I've been doing this since the 90s. It's awesome. Beautiful hold from the overhook. Karate chop. And key lock karate chop. Let's go. Okay. Um, every time I teach, I'm like wondering, why didn't I show this a long time ago? You know, we've been in my school lately. We've been going back to basics. Um, we've been going, going back to, uh, not that this is basic, basic, but what I'm saying is, is like teaching people just simple positional guard, how to control, get what I mean? And then from teaching the basic control, hey, what do I do from here? How do I attack from here, realistically? If you teach the basic drills like, oh, the guy's hands on the mat, grab the wrist, sit up, get a kimura, that's great. But oftentimes students are like, man, when I'm biting, the guy's never there. He's never, I never find that opportunity. So, but there's ways to bring that in too. I'm just, I'm just stating that sometimes we go through these super basic things and then students will never find themselves in those positions when they're actually live sparring. So what I'm showing you today is something you can use. If you can get to the overhook in the clinch position in the closed guard. So if you get to this position, you have a, you have a plan and uh, it's very powerful if you know how to use it. All right, like, share, subscribe, comment down below and I'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.